it's a very typical position that people on the right wing will hold that Christianity is a religion for effeminate people. I was watching a stream the other day between three YouTubers, Charlemagne, Academic Agent, and Zargon of Akkad, where for some time this issue was discussed. And so I figure that it's my, my duty, because Christianity was not very well represented on that stream, to perhaps point to the source of the heroism in Christianity, because contrary to one of the things that Sargon said, the source of the heroism is in the church itself. Let us discuss the saints, because these were great men, heroes that existed up and down the ages. You can even go outside in the UK and find these. You can walk down the street and find a, a church um, dedicated to St. Aelred of Riveau, or to St. Mildred of Thanet, or St. Boniface. You have lots of these saints and they build together to form this cohesive tradition that you can literally walk outside your front door and find them. And you can go and find their lives of virtue because people have written these. In fact, we have an entire order dedicated to checking the historical reliability of each account. We'll talk about two distinct categories which are presented by Evola. And those two categories are warriors and monks. We have St. Oswald, king of Northumbria, who was somebody who was at war with the local pagans. You have Charlemagne himself, who is considered a local saint in Europe. You even have crusader kings who are considered saints, such as King Louis of France. And that's just a few. Second category, monks, we can name thousands of these. We have, of course, Francis of Assisi, who, far from being a hippie, like some people seem to think, was actually very hardcore. In fact, he met at one point the Sultan of Egypt and said he would run across burning coals in order to evangelize him. These are not the words of a weak man. You have the Desert Fathers, thousands of them. And we have many of these people, um, even on our own isles, around the time that they were active. You have St. Columba. People seem to think that uh, Christianity suddenly became less based. You have these same saints in our own times. We have St. Maximilian Kolbe, a man who was sent to Auschwitz by the Nazis. And for the sake of um, a prison re revolt, uh, the Nazis decided that they would round up some people to kill in reprisal. And one of the men, a man that Maximilian didn't know, cried out because of his family, how he wouldn't be able to be with them. And so Colby, setting aside his life, spent nine days being dehydrated and starved with other prisoners until he eventually was killed by the terrified SS. Now why were they terrified? But what does Saint Maximilian Colby do? He prays loudly and sings for nine days straight, knowing that he is going to be starved and dehydrated to death. And this was only in the 1940s. We could talk of many others. Padre Pio springs to mind. There are many of these monastic saints in our own times, and an ignorance of them is an ignorance of where the heroism in Christianity comes from. In fact, a lot of the early Franciscans that came to Britain in the 13th century originally were following an, a version of the rule that they followed where they couldn't even wear shoes, as a testament to their poverty which they followed with absolute tenacity and providing an example to the local people. These men would walk around in winter in the UK with no shoes on, and they would trail around blood. Now of course, many secular people would view this as crazy, but this is because they don't understand why they developed such fortitude, and that was to save the souls of their fellow people. In fact, it seems rather strange to me that that somebody like A.A., who is a literature professor, so far as I understand it, isn't aware of the huge variety of chivalric literature that came about in the High Middle Ages. Chrétien de Troyes, uh, the Song of Roland for all its faults. Um, as we will address, Evola seems to think this comes from some sort of imperial pagan influence. But the fact that this wouldn't be represented in the Christian tradition by A.A. seems really strange. And so we turn to our criticism of Evola, because Evola doesn't actually know what he's talking about in Revolt Against the Modern World when it comes to the history of Christianity. He presents it as this kind of strange death cult that confused the Romans, and it did confuse the Romans, that somehow changed into this like weird pagan amalgam after the Council of Nicaea and the Edict of Milan. In other words, when Christianity became accepted. Now, of course, even a cursory look at the Fathers, the likes of Irenaeus, who come before the Edict of Milan will tell you that this isn't true. There is perfect continuity between the Christians of the Antonine Sian era and those afterwards with some developments. But even looking at the scripture should tell you otherwise. That, because you can see this, this warrior spirit in the Old Testament repeatedly through figures like David, 
through Mathathias and through Judas Maccabeus. You can see this through uh, even Josiah in a certain way. You can see this all over the Old Testament. You can even see it in Abraham. You see this throughout the Old Testament to pretend that there isn't some sort of warrior masculine ethos in Christianity is to just simply be ignorant of scripture. It's right there in the tradition. And admittedly after Nicaea, you have fathers come along that codify this into a just war theory. Uh, the likes of St. Augustine spring to mind. The idea that Christianity is this passive religion in its tradition is absurd. And so even in the modern world, it is still absurd. And to hear Charlemagne sort of poo poo uh, implicitly, modern Christianity is absurd as well, because you see this same spirit in our popes. Pius XII himself actually went out of his way to get Hitler assassinated. You have people like Pope Saint Paul VI, who wrote a document endorsing violent revolution in cases where there was manifest long standing tyranny, following in the tradition of political thought of the Catholic Church. You have Pope St. John Paul II, who in a single speech in Poland, one single speech, he basically flicks the domino that collapses the Polish communist state. And you have, even now in Francis, a man who is maligned because of, frankly, ignorance, I think. You have him standing up to the EU and telling them that they're a dictatorship because they keep word policing, and comparing them to the Soviets who fell before them. These men are not cowards, and neither does our church have to be. And so AA may ask in response to my comments, well, why is it that when I go down the road to my local Catholic church that I see all of this manifest effeminacy? Well, there are two answers for this. The first one is that you didn't really spend much time in the church, so you didn't really get to know the people, so how can you assume? The second thing is, is that although this is true for a lot of people, this is because this is true of all societies. A vast number of people are going to be fundamentally interested in their appetites and fundamentally interested in their pride. And so they're not going to develop virtue. But this doesn't matter because you already have right there all of the ability to develop heroism. You have lives of the saints, like I just showed. You have the Desert Fathers. You have the life of St. Anthony. You have the life of Anthony of Padua. You have all of these different lives, hundreds of them. And you can access them at the click of a button. All you have to do is go on Amazon or even just go on to New Advent and read them. You have them right there. A lot of them are written so that they can be a model to imitate. You even have entire volume sets of spiritual theology and moral theology devoted to making people heroes. This is called The Three Ages of the Interior Life and it's written by a French priest called Father Reginald Garage de Grange. You have hundreds of these. You have the imitation of Christ. You have many. And you may dislike the, the uh, guitar at Mass. But it doesn't change the fact that Jesus is right there. The man who rose up all of these heroes, all 27,000 of them and more, you have him right there. You may find it uh, cringe or whatever, but it doesn't really ultimately matter. You have the means there, so you should use them. If you wish to be a hero, you can find it in the Christian tradition. And you will find it through God, through the saints, and through the sacraments. And so with that, I ask for a response, and I would ask people that they like and subscribe as always. Thank you very much for watching.